Hallelujah. This is the night the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice. Amen. Wonderful things. God is on the move, and he's on the groove. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercies and for your grace. Would you turn to James chapter 1, please? Hallelujah. James chapter 1. Can everybody hear me? Okay. Hallelujah. Are you expecting? That means you're pregnant. Hallelujah. That means you're getting ready to give birth to something. <laughs> Glory. Verse 12. Let's speak it together, please. Blessed is the man who what? Endures endures, 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 endures. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you got to endure. <laughs> and we are in such a time of need of an endurance. Amen. Again, remember the atmosphere is, there's such a battle in the heavenlies, and the atmosphere is changing constantly. We're battling to take possession of the atmosphere. Amen. He said, blessed is a man who endures temptations. Those are attacks, floods of the enemies, trials, disappointments, sicknesses, fears, rejection, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, and all the other stuff that you're going to be attacked with. For when he has been approved, in other words, it's how you endure is a test. If you've been improved, if you've been approved, if you've passed the test of endurance, he says this. He will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised those who love him. But if you don't pass the test, well, there's no crown. Because the only way you can make it home is you're going to have to endure all the way. All the way home, all the way to the throne. Endurance. You know, in endurance, it means that we're to stand fast, you know. We're to wait, have patience. People always talk about, how you going to pray for patience? I'm like, what an idiot. You're going to get it no matter what. Whether you pray for it or you don't. <laughs> patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen. But in this endurance that you and I are in, sometimes you're going to have to hold on during the flood or with the attacks. You hold on. You stand fast. And then there's sometimes where you press in because you want to be one who pursues also. We endure because we trust. A person that doesn't endure doesn't trust God. And a person that doesn't trust God doesn't know him. A lot of people say they know God, but then they don't endure. And that is the fruit of it. You know him, you endure. Hallelujah. What are we doing? We're, we endure in the promises of his words. Amen? Why? Because if you don't know the promises of his words, what do you got to hold on to? You're just grabbing on the air. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. 
But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires in what? Entice. Let me tell you when temptation comes, when you step off the word. There's the enemy waiting. Because the word, remember, the word says no other one can build a foundation except for Christ. Amen? So on the foundation of Christ, through the anointing, in his anointing is his presence, power, and truth. His truth is his word. So that is what you and I stand on. The moment you step off, the enemy's there. That's all you do is compromise one little thing, and he'll, he's there. So, so many people want to test the waters. They put their one foot off. Didn't realize they just put their foot in defilement waters. Then their toe gets contaminated, you know? But, man, you can't, that, that, that's what's so important. Why would you want to test contaminated waters? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires or emotions. And then he's enticed. In other words, he bit the bait. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Don't be deceived. Very important. Amen. Every good gift and every pre perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the what? By the what? The word of truth. And that's what we're to stand on, isn't it? That we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. <laughs> you know, when the enemy comes in temptation, what is he actually doing? He's, in, he's inviting you into false emotional fulfillments of the world. That's a part of the temptation. False emotional fulfillments of the world. Blessed is the man who endures these things. That's why it says, count it all joy. Amen? Count it all joy. It's like, okay, just do it. It's not about how you feel. Just do it. In Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Blessed is the man who endures temptations, attacks, false fu emotional fulfillments. Again, the only way that you can stand and endure is if you're holding on and standing on the promises of God. So if a person doesn't know the Word of God, there's no way they can endure. It's impossible. Because the Word says, submit to God, then resist the devil. So they're never able to resist the devil. They live a life on a merry-go-round. Roller coasters, up and down, up and down, up and down. Not steadfast. Psalm 119, verse 1. Blessed are the what? Undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Is the law of the Lord the word? Yeah. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Are his testimonies his word? Yes. Who seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Is his precepts his word? Yes. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Is his statutes his word? Yes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments, which is his word. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn of your righteous judgments, I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. Wow. Verse 65. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 65. 
Let's speak it. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I what? I went astray or I stepped off your word. Then I was afflicted. But now I what? I keep your word. I'm back on the word again. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. My heart their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law or your word. That I may, um, it is good for me that I have been what? Afflicted. Now, uh, in this affliction, see, the animal, enemy, when you step off, there's two areas. One area is the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the enemy's coming to kill. God is coming to correct. There's a difference. Amen? God comes to correct. The enemy comes to kill. God wants to get you back on the word as quickly as possible. The enemy wants to pull you off the word. So that you run to the world, you run to yourself, you live out of your emotions, and you run back to the things that were false fulfillments. Amen? Oh, happy days. <laughs> Verse 72. Uh, that's 71 again. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments or your word. Those who fear you will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in your Word. In other words, we walk in obedience to his word, not running to the world, but running to the throne and not the phone. Amen? The moment you step off the words of his promise, affliction awaits you. Again, affliction comes in many forms from enemy or from the, from the Lord. And sometimes both. Remember, the enemy comes to kill, God comes to correct. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. In verse 1, let's speak it together, please. Therefore, we also, since we, have, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily snares us, and let us run with what? Endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners <laughs> against himself, lest you become, what, weary and discouraged in your souls." You know, whatever you're going through, I can tell you somebody else is going through something worse. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed striving against sin, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons or daughters. My son or daughter, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Now, what is chastening? It's correction. Correction brings direction, and direction brings protection. Amen. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. <laughs> whom the Lord loves, he what? He chastens. <laughs> it 
sure didn't seem like my parents loved me when I was getting chastened, I'll tell you what. <laughs> but whom the Lord loves, he chases. They said they loved you, but, you know, it sure didn't seem like they loved you, you know. Some of us more abused than others. Hallelujah. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and he scourges every son whom he receives. In other words, what's he doing? His chastening is what? Correction. Amen. For if you endure his chastening, his rebuke, his convictions, God deals with you as sons or daughters. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or correct? But if you are for without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. See, many people get offended when they are chastened. They get so easily offended because they're living out of emotion and not on the word. Does everybody understand it? See, you and I should realize, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because there's something, obviously, that is, I'm going to fall into a trap. And without your chastening, I wouldn't be rescued. Does everybody understand that? See, people always look at, because this is how the enemy operates, you're bad. You're no good. How could you do such a thing? That's how the enemy attacks. The Lord says, I understand. You got deceived. Don't be stupid anymore. Learn. Amen? Now, I'm going to correct you so you don't do this again. So we understand. Praise God. So it's because he loves us. He's not out to kill us like some people think he is. <laughs> Hallelujah. Furthermore, we had uh, human fathers, right, who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to a, the father of spirits and what? And live. For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them. But he, God the Father, for our profit, that we may be partakers of his what? Holiness, his righteousness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful at the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So is a part of your training chastening? Yes. So don't get freaked out when it happens. Why? Because God is trying to keep us in a place of endurance. Listen, there's so much stuff right now going on. There's so much shaking going on. Without endurance, people are falling off. They can't even last. Because they're still living emotionally. They are not living on the solid word of what God says and promises. They're living on what people say, what their feelings say, what their mind says, and what the voice of the stranger says. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? <laughs> His love will chasten because correction brings protection. Amen? And you get direction out of it. We are trained by His love, so that means you're going to be trained by chastening. 2 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to give you a title in a minute. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second Peter chapter 1. In verse 2. Remember, we are standing on the promises of God, what he says. Not what the world says, what he says. It says, grace and peace be multiplied, in verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the what? The knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And where are you going to find that knowledge of God? In his word. Amen. And his divine power is given us 
to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So the divine power, amen, is brought to me and you with understanding because of his knowledge of his word. His knowledge reveals him. Hallelujah. Verse 4. By which have been given to us exceedingly and great and precious what? Promises of what? His word. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Now listen. Are you a partaker of the divine nature without standing on his word? No. It's impossible. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The knowledge and promises of his words, that means you're accepting, you're believing, and you're decreeing, will allow access to the divine nature. Now listen, where the divine nature is, there is no darkness. Amen? There's no deception. There is no sickness. There is no fear. And self cannot exist in a divine nature. Does everybody grab hold of this? So when you're truly in the divine nature, you're perfect. It's when you're not in the divine nature that you're not. Sickness does not dwell in the divine nature. It dwells in the human nature. Amen? It doesn't dwell in the divine nature. The divine nature... Is not from this world. It's from the future. It's from God Almighty. He's eternal and He's pure and He's holy and He's righteous. Your divine nature in you cannot be sick nor contaminated unless you allow it. But nothing in a divine nature dwells. There's no shadow. It's light. God is light, and where light is, there's life, amen, and there's truth. So in this, when we're really walk, talking about being filled with the Spirit and so forth, if we're really living out of the divine nature, there is no corruption there. It doesn't associate with it. It is totally protected by God. The divine nature is there for me and you. It says that you partake of the divine nature. So as you and I are partaking of the divine nature, we overcome everything of this world. Hallelujah. Knowledge of his promises, accepting and believing and decreeing will allow access to the divine nature where no darkness, sickness, fear, or self can exist. God chastens me and you to get back on the word of promises, which with endurance and patience. Why? So that we can be reconnected to the divine nature. Remember, we partake of the divine nature, who is Christ. In this whole time, we endure in patience. We're waiting. We're pressing in. We're fighting. And as you continue to endure and you're standing on the promises of his word and covenant, he eventually will come with an answer. He will come with an answer of direction or he will come with a manifestation. Many people get healed because of that. Many get free from drugs and alcohol because of that. Many get free from all kinds of things. Why? Because they're constantly standing and decreeing on the promises of God Almighty. They're living on the Word, not on anything else. Anything else outside of living on the Word is corruption. It's contamination and it's defilement. Amen? Praise God. Hebrews 10.
Glory. Now, when we grieve the Holy Spirit, I want you to think about this. When the Holy Spirit is, a part, is associated in an area of the divine nature. Amen? So when a person grieves the Holy Spirit, the divine nature is not accessible. Does everybody get it? Until what? Repentance comes. Because the only thing that reconnects me and you to God is the blood. The blood always goes before the Spirit. I've never seen a divine nature sick. It's called divine nature. Hello. God doesn't get sick. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no fear. There's no loss of the eye, loss of the flesh, pride of life. There's no self, thank God. So the divine nature is an extension of God Almighty into this realm by His Spirit into me and you. So you can partake of this divine nature if you stand on His promises. But once you step off and your mouth afflicts you. Say hello. Hebrews 10.32. Glory. Let's speak it. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you what? You endured a great struggle with sufferings. Hello. Partly while you were made a spectacle both by the reproaches and tribulations and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Your confidence. Your what? Your confidence. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> confidence is fueled by, I mean, endurance is fueled by God's love, commitment, and determination. I'm going to say that again. Endurance is fueled by God's love, commitment, and determination. Love, commitment, and determination will fuel endurance. Is everybody okay? I want to go back to this. Hallelujah. Verse 34, for you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your what? Your confidence. Hmm, confidence. That's your trust and hope in his words of promise. Your confidence is not in yourself. It's not in man. It certainly isn't in your feelings. Amen? It isn't in your boss. It isn't in anyone at all. It's in his word. It's in who he says he is and his promises and covenant. We are covenant-keeping children. And we've got to maintain that. If you're a covenant-keeping child, you're living out of the word, on the word, and the word is through you. That means you're a partaker of the divine nature. Hello. But if you're not living on, if you got one foot off the word, and you're still testing waters, you're still testing the world, you're still associating, touching things, things that you're not supposed to touch, you cannot have manifest and live out and partake of the divine nature. You will not. Where is your confidence? Where is your trust? Is it in God? Is it in your job? Is it in your doctors? Hello? Is it in your attorney? <laughs> <Is it? laughs> we won't go any further. <laughs> Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has what? 
great reward. There's a great reward. Victory. Freedom. Healing. Deliverance. For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now listen to this. So you're living on the word. You're decreeing the word. Right? You're an epistle. Now the Lord says something for you to do. It may be something for prosperity. Hello? He's telling you to do something. It may be something for healing. It may be doing something for whatever it may be. But he says this. He says, for, um, so that after you have done the will, the, the will is his request for you to do something. Amen? After you have done the request, after you fulfill what he asks you to do, he says this, that you may receive the promise, the release of the promise. So in that release of the promise can be a manifestation. Amen? Or an answered prayer. It could be of anything. But you first must fulfill what he asks you to do. If the Lord gives you counsel, he's asking you to do something. Freedom doesn't come through oh, disobedience. It comes through obedience. Is everybody okay? Anybody okay? Praise God. Now, <laughs> oh, glory. Let's go a little further. Verse 37, for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just live by what? Faith. That means you're trusting in his word. You are living from the future to the present. Forever attached in the heavenlies. Faith. But if anyone draws back from my, my soul has no pleasure in them. But we are not those who draw back from perdition, but those who believe to the saving of the soul. Again, your confidence is trust and hope in his word of promises. We endure, obey to complete the direction so that his promise can manifest, amen, or that we can get a direction. We live by faith in his words that are attached to the eternal throne. Endurance, again, is fueled by love, commitment, and determination. You need endurance so you can continue to press on, which causes, now listen to this, which what? Causes God to fulfill his word which causes God to fulfill his word. God doesn't need a reason. He needs a cause. Does everybody get it? He doesn't need a reason. He needs a cause. There's a, it's, there are two different things. Now, that's the name of the teaching, the cause. Now, listen to this. The cause, what is the cause? It invokes a response or action. To cause, it invokes a response or an action. Reason is justification for an action or an explanation. When people have a reason, they usually want to explain it. But there's justified. Amen? So between the reason, one is uh, justification for ex explanation. The other one invokes a Something to happen. Again, God doesn't need a reason. He created me and you with a reason. But he's looking for a cause. He's looking for someone to cause him to move. You know, uh, and you probably heard this testimony. When I had messed up my leg and, and, and so forth, and I told him I wouldn't be able to walk for three months and whatever, and Wanted to give me all kinds of stuff and whatever. and That happened on a Sunday from playing football. And uh, that Tuesday night, we had Bible study, and I had crutches. <laughs> and uh, so I got on my crutches, went behind the pulpit, <laughs> put crutches over on the side. We praised and worship. Man, the anointing came, and I heard the Lord say, Walk. I put my foot down, almost went through the ceiling. 
I was like, and then on the side, it was, you know, God, you know, anyways. He was like on a boat, and he was in the front of the boat looking at me, and there was water all around. And he said, ask me. He said, ask me to command me to walk. I said, Lord, would you please command me to walk? And he said, I command you to walk. And I did. I ran around the church. Fine. I came home with the crutches on my shoulder that night. My wife was very happy because there was all kinds of stuff. And she was like, man, this is a crazy time for you to start this. We, you know, Lissy was just born or something. I don't know. And she needed help and whatever. But it wasn't until he said, ask me to command you to walk. That was a cause. So I said, Lord, please command me to walk. Because see, he first said, I heard, walk. And man, when I put my foot down, I'm thinking, what the snap? That couldn't have been my father, because the pain would have been gone. But I looked, and it was. He was teaching me about the cause. And this was years ago. <clears throat> years ago. <clears throat> and so in that, you know, when we go to the Lord, he, Lord, your word says, what are you doing? You're in an area of cause, not reason. Oh, Lord, you know I need this because of this, this, and that. Forget that. That's reasoning with God. You don't need to reason with him. You need to get him into a place to cause him to move. Because that's what he's looking for. He wants to move. Amen? Oh, happy days. Glory. Is everybody all right? Again, endurance is fueled by love, commitment, and determination. What causes God to fulfill his word? Causes to invoke response, action, or manifestation. Reason is justification or explanation. We have already been justified we don't need to reason amen first corinthians 6 glory <clears throat> hallelujah First Corinthians six verse seven. The cause. Not because the cause. We have already been justified. We don't need to reason anymore. Remember. Once he tells you to do something and you complete it, then the, it's released. The promise is released. The promise is not everyone completes what he's asked to do. And they're all wondering, what the heck? What happened? Didn't Saul do the same thing? Remember, you're told to kill everyone. And don't take anything. Kill the place. Destroy it. And he came back with the king and goods and everything else. He compromised. He thought he was doing it for God. Hallelujah. And he got rejected. 1 Corinthians 6, 7, let's speak it. Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you that you go to law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unjust or the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at the disobedience will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor uh, idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, 
nor thieves, nor covetousness, or covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of us. But we were washed, but we were sanctified. Amen? And we are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful for us, but, not all, but all things are not helpful. So there are some things that are harmful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Again, we've been washed, we've been sanctified, we've been justified in His name by His Spirit. No reason. There's no reason for reasoning. But cause. So that we, in, it's, which is invoked by a decree of His covenant promise. And because we're standing. Listen, you can't decree God's Word if you're off the foundation. That ain't going to work. If you're still touching things that are unclean out there and trying to decree... It ain't going to work. Amen? We are promise covenant keepers. And he is a covenant promise in God. Psalm 143. Hallelujah. So if God says it, do it, and once you do it, you can expect a manifestation or a direction. You can expect a deliverance, healing, whatever. Psalm 143, start right from verse 1. Let's speak it. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me. And in your righteousness, do not enter into judgment with your servant. For in your sight, no one living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Answer me speedily, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. For I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy those who afflict my soul. Here's the cause. For I am your servant. Oh, happy days. James chapter 1. No reason, just cause. James chapter 121. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? This should be life changing tonight. <clears throat> Verse 21, let's speak it. <clears throat> Therefore, lay aside all what? filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to 
save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. There's a lot of listeners, but not doers. They're not living off the word. They're not living out of the word. They're still living out of how they feel. They're still living out of their assumptions, perceptions, but not out of the word. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and keep oneself unspotted from the influence of the world. Doer of his word. You know, in this, he said that, but he who looks into the perfect liberty of the law of uh, the perfect law of liberty that is the law of the spirit and in the law of the spirit you he says that you must deny yourself amen deny yourself in this i want to share in this he's saying deny yourself pick up the word and believe pick up the word and what believe amen he who continues in this continues and that is a key factor. So many people expect all kinds of things to happen because they obeyed once or twice. This is a process of obedience. 1 John chapter 5. And you can't reason with God in this. Oh, Lord, but I've done this. Oh, Lord, but don't I deserve this? It's not. That's reasoning. But I've been a good boy or a good girl. Forget it. And don't go to him and tell him you're humble. Puke. Lord, I'm your humble servant. Expect to chasten him. <laughs> Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 14. Now, this is the confidence. Is everybody there? Okay. Now, this is the confidence that we have in what? Him, not us. Hallelujah. That if we ask anything according to his word, his will. How many of y'all know his word is his will? All right. He will, and he what? He hears us. He hears us. If we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that. We have the petitions that we have asked of him. In other words, we know he's got it. Now, what we want to do is allow him to have the last say. Nobody else gets the last say. Not even us. He gets the last say. Verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin, not leading to death. There is sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. Hello? You need to go tell him. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is sin not leading to death. We, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. Now, sin is the presence of evil. Amen? But he who has been born of God keeps himself from the presence of evil. Now, why? Because he's partaking of the divine nature. It's a different lifestyle. It's a different way of life. It's not taking part of the, partaking of the human nature. You're no longer doing that. You're putting up with it. You're crucifying it. But you're now partaking of the divine nature. And in the divine nature, you're standing on the promise of God what he says. Again, the divine nature don't get sick. It's the human nature that gets sick. It's the human nature that gets emotionally goofy. 
Not the divine nature, the human nature. Unfortunately, we still carry this human nature. Amen? You sleep with it. You look in the mirror. There it is. You pretty it up as much as you can. <laughs> you dress it up as much as you can. You work it out as much as you can. You buff it up as much as you can. But it's still stinky human nature. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Oh, happy days. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. Why? Because he's in a divine nature. He's partaking in divine nature. Living off the word, living through the word, decreeing the word. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him, in the anointing, who is true, and in his Son, Jesus, the Christ, who is true. This is the true God and the eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols that will contaminate you. Amen? I'm going to close at 2 Corinthians 6. The cause, because glory. You know, we fall into a trap of the enemy where we begin to trust other things in the Word. I mean, and so don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, remember, medications and supplements are for the human nature, not for the divine nature. <laughs> but our trust is not in them. My trust is not in a doctor or a mechanic or anyone else. My trust is in the Lord. And what he says. And there are times when you just don't know what to do yet. And when you don't know what to do, you wait. It's called endurance. You know, I've been looking for a, a truck. A box truck. It's just been put on my heart to look for a box truck. I've, I've, probably, I've probably traveled two, 200 miles already looking at all these trucks. And, and the best ones that I found for the best price is one of the ones that they've retired from the, uh, what do you call it, U-Haul. And uh, they're, they're the, you know, anyways. You would think that they're the most best kept up ones and whatever, you know. But every one I've tried, in fact, the last one I drove the other day, the transmission blew up on me while I was driving, a test drive, and a <laughs> smoke everywhere. We got stranded. The only thing it went into was reverse. And then uh, we found one this morning, and I went over there to see the guy. It was the perfect truck. I mean, it was clean. It was a thing. I drove great and whatever, but I had no witness in getting it. So I didn't know what to do. And so the, I, I wanted to come back to my, I wanted to see something on my emails before I did anything because there was something I had sent out about something, see if somebody would donate it one. So I told him I needed to go look at one more, other tr one more other thing, and that's what I needed to look at, and then I would get with him. I said, but this is the best truck I've driven. The only problem I didn't like was the mileage. I was hoping to have less miles because I had found out that they begin to retire these trucks because at a certain mileage, like 150, 160,000 miles, the transmissions start to go out and engines start to go out. Well, I just found that out. So I'm like, well, and this one was like 150, 50 something thousand miles. 
So I thought, you know what? I, nothing happened at this one thing. And so I said, okay. In other words, in my, in the spirit, I'm like, okay, Lord, if this is really you, you can hold on to it. So I tried calling the guy. I couldn't get an answer. I text him and everything. About 30, 40 minutes later, he said, I sends it back. I sold it. Okay, cool. But like I said, it was the best one that I've driven. And so then the enemy starts attacking. Man, you missed it this, that way. I said, no, 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 no. No, I stand on the word. Because if you, he wanted it for me because that's, that's how him and I communicate with things. If there's something that I'm supposed to have, it's going to be there. As a, as a, if it's something, I'm on, the pop of this, I'm supposed to have this, you'll make a way to keep it. You'll hold off someone else from buying it, and you'll keep it for me. Does everybody get it? So in that, you know, the Lord began to remind me of this today. And it was like, you know what? I had a cause of celebration. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for protecting me. Because now I'm thinking, this here poor guy probably bought it because it drives beautiful. Next year, the engine's going to drop and the transmission's going to probably drop out. But the Lord rescued me from that. So anyways, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Hallelujah. So listen, when you, when you do those things in your relationship with the Lord and you know that, listen, if it's for me, it's for me. If it's not for me, it's not for me. Even though it seems like it's for me, God will honor that. Do you understand? How many things have we purchased when we shouldn't? You know, you think about it. I go through my whole life going, oh, my God. I'd have... I'd, I'd fill up this whole place, I mean, this whole city. All the things I shouldn't have purchased, you know. Stupid things that whatever. I mean, one of the things that I believe right now in this endurance is God is trying to get us to a place where he tr we are truly standing on his word. Remember, the disciples didn't have a Bible. They had the Holy Spirit, the living Divine nature, amen? Walking word. Walking word. In this endurance, we overcome everything. Everything. It doesn't matter. You overcome it. No matter what's going on, you will overcome. As long as you stand on this word. Second Corinthians 6, 14, let's speak it. Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. Praise God. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with an idiot, I mean an idol? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said. I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their God, and they'll be my people. If you do this, what? Come out from among them. Come out from trusting everything else but his word. Amen? And, don't, and be separate, says the Lord. And don't touch what's unclean, and I will receive you. And I'll be a father to you. And you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the reverence and fear of God Almighty. Don't touch anything that is off the foundation of his words. Amen? Don't touch it. Just to be a son and daughter is a cause for him to move on your behalf. Amen? But what delays things is when we begin to trust in other things. If it ain't from him, we don't want it. If it's not from him, we don't want it. But when it's from him, you know that it's going to work to the good. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word.
We thank you for the cause. We thank you that you have a reason for each and every one of us to manifest the cause from you. We ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace to abound abundantly. We repent for those things that we've accepted that were not sent from you. And we ask that you cleanse us from those things. And that you would purify us in every area that we may be sons and daughters and servants that are well-pleasing to you. For your name and for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.